All right, coming up next, it's a featherweight matchup between Alex Caceres and Charles Oliveira. All right, well, he's one of the more accomplished Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioners in this division, DC, and I know how many chokes you have in your arsenal. Offensive jiu-jitsu, defensive jiu-jitsu doesn't get much better than this guy. It doesn't get as high level in terms of the jiu-jitsu knowledge. He knows in every exchange that he's the guy that's processing things at a different level, from the armbar submissions that he has shown in the octagon to the beautiful guillotine chokes that he does over and over again. And don't think that he won't roll for a knee bar and get a submission. Right. It's just constant danger when you're in the jiu-jitsu with this guy. And even the high-level wrestlers that he's fought have paused to try to take him down because of that patented guillotine. It's so truly a case of pick your poison with this Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner. All right, so here he is, one of the more prolific takedown artists in the UFC at present. And when you to your offensive takedown game, you know you're doing something right. And we talk about wrestlers and judo players and grapplers, but this guy just combines all of that. He is able to use foot sweeps from the grappling game. He is able to use throws from judo, and he's able to use wrestling in the, from the wrestling game to take people down. He has an array of takedowns at his disposal, and he uses every single one of them, from the speed of the level change to the timing to the knowledge of where to go next when the guy starts to defend He's truly, truly something special. I don't... You ready? You ready? Let's All right, ready fight. to go for round one, and to the surprise of some, he won his last fight by submission. So with momentum, he enters this, the highest profile spot of his career, trying to keep that obvious momentum going. Can he realize a UFC title shot by the end of the year? That remains to be seen. But if his last performance was any indication, the ceiling is championship for this young contender. Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by this gentleman. These guys throwing early. Effective punch there by Oliveira. Man, he's just got a great feel for the striking realm early in this one. The timing is on point. He's doing a great job of mixing everything up. Oh, that was a big takedown. Is this the one that's going to break him? Well, anytime you are in a ground fighting situation with this fighter, you're potentially playing with fire. Goes upstairs for an elbow. All right, good movement by him here on the ground. He really is a master of these transitions. He is a master of movement on the ground. You never know where he's going to be. Lands an elbow there. Nice job by Oliveira. Oh, big elbow. All right, side control now. All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. Big, powerful punch land. Now he gets back to range. The right hook to the body. Big leg kick land. Just over two minutes to go. Oh, big roundhouse attempt just misses. Unable to connect with the right. Back and forth we go. Good punch. So just over 20 total strikes have landed for Charles Oliveira. Over the top. This fight's going to be over, DC. What a great way of mixing up his attack. He didn't stay the course. He mixed it up. He went high when his opponent thought he was going low. And now he's got him hurt very badly. Oliveira doing the right things defensively. Great shot. Caceres has got the tie clinch now. Oh, significant strike attempt there, but a huge block. Big left hand there inside. Oh! Dude's hurt. Serve him up. Go get him. Oh, straight right. Oh, big left. Wow. Big kick lands. Right, no more strikes. Good job. 
All right, let us look back at some of the action from that previous round. DC punches in bunches. I mean, over and over, he landed that big punch. And every time he landed it, he got the reaction that he was looking for. His opponent really did start to take notice every time he was loading that strike up. Round two underway. Great punch landed with so much power. Real sneaky Stay body strong. kick. Stay strong. Keep moving. Blocks the shot. You don't really stand after you take a head kick like this. That is such toughness to even be on your feet right now. Back to the feet. All right, well, he's landed some good sh There's no soda. More often than not, it's one and done. He's not even getting a combination. I mean, if you're going to sit there at the drive-thru, order a combination, take the soda with your food, give him the right hand behind the jab, give him the hook behind the right hand. Jab, right hand, hook, that's two pieces of chicken and a biscuit. Finish him off with the uppercut. That is your soda. I mean, come on, man. Let this guy have the whole thing. Great upper body movement defensively. Slips another strike there. And offensively, he hasn't been a world beater, but defensively, he's been strong tonight. And that has to cause frustration for the opponent. Not being... Oh! He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. Oh, straight right! That shot is blocked by Caceres, man. What a fantastic strike to throw at the exact right moment. He deserves this moment. Go finish this fight. Whiffs on the right hand. Now goes in and secures the takedown. All right, he's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape or maybe look for a Kimura here. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Oh! Side control now. Oliveira's got him in a crucifix. Going to work from the top now. Goodness, what a fight. Right, I mean, how do you not admire the focus of this young fighter? You could tell he was looking for that submission much earlier in the round, but he didn't want to rush it. He stayed patient, let the setup do its thing, and ultimately the submission materializes organically late in the round. High-level stuff out of that young fighter here tonight. All right, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. Just watch how slowly he approaches the submission, though. He never rushes. He takes his time, but it's his trickiness. It's his ability to trick people into going to the floor with him that puts them in danger and finishes fights. So there he is, your winner by submission. That could be presented inside the octagon. Bruce Buffer has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Mergliata has called a stop to this contest at four minutes, 32 seconds of round number two. Declaring the winner by...
that clock doesn't stop until you submit him. Let's go. Hey, good job today. You really crushed it out there. Great work. Great work. Focus on progressing that submission. Okay, yes, keep going. Getting close to the finish now. Listen, listen, we won't make it easy for you. All right, so just keep pushing those submissions. Okay, there it is, great work. Focus on progressing that submission. Don't stop now, 30 on the clock. Beautiful combination. Keep it up. Put the pressure on it. Pressure. Pressure here. I want to see some pressure. Nice work today. That's how we roll.
Let's roll. BJJ today, kid. Let's focus on completing submissions. Remember, position over submission. I love those strikes. I love those strikes. Nice combination there. Ooh, that was pretty good. Man, your next opponent is going to be no match for you. Nice transition. Keep working. Here you go. Here you go. Now work on the finish. And 30 to go. Okay, okay, close, close. Remember, position before submission. Nice work. Excellent job. There we go. That's the position we want. Let's go. There we go. Nice work, kid. You're on your way. BJJ, we are looking for your sparring partner to tap, okay? Not blackout, but tap out. So let's be playful. Let's go. Nice work. Lock him down. Let's push the pace on.
Let's get after it. Work there. Nice work. Lock him down. Ooh, that was pretty good. Remember, repetition is key, and it always pays off. So let's go. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Nice pass. That's what I like to see. You kept working for position. Let's focus on submissions today. I want you to work for that superior position and bait your opponent into a trap. Let's go. Hey. Nice work, lock him down. Yes, you own that position. Good work. Beautiful combination. I love it. Keep it up. Put the pressure on him. Come on now, you got 30. All right, let's go. Keep working, keep pushing. Listen, you keep training like that, and no one will catch you. Some nice transitions today. You maintain control and move. Smooth, strong. That's what we're doing today. Nice job. Start working on that submission. There it is. That's it. That's it. Lock it. Lock it.
on now. You got 30. Don't worry about it. You're getting better. Nice pass. Timing, reaction, that's the goal today. Beautiful combination, I love it. Keep it up, put the pressure on him. Man, your next opponent it's gonna be no match for you. Keep working. It's there for you. Beautiful combination. Keep it up. Put the pressure on it. Don't stop now. 30 on the clock. Some nice submission skills today. Really like what I saw. Alright kid, time for some grappling. Let's keep it fun and look for that submission. There we go, that's a combo. There we go, there we go. Position before submission, I like it. That's it, that's it. Lock it, lock it. Nice work. Lock him down. Yes, 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 that's it. Now try to lock it up. And 30 to go. Good progress. Good progress. Keep working on it. Don't 
worry about today. There's always tomorrow. All right, coming up next, it's a featherweight matchup between Daniel Hooker and Charles Oliveira. Well, this dude is a submission magician. I am very thankful I am not fighting him here tonight, and it's really a case of pick your poison. He has so many different chokes in his arsenal and has been a master of getting these fights exactly where he wants them. There are black belts and there are guys like this who can do jujitsu at a level that not many people, regardless of the time spent, can truly get to. His understanding of position is truly unbelievable. He always has the frame. The moment you start to press into him, he's always underhooking, always looking for the next escape route, but not to get back to his feet. Right. He wants to go from bottom to top. If he's in the top position, you are constantly, constantly in danger. Don't think he can't submit you from the bottom. Right. But his position of choice will always be in the top position sitting yes. in that beautiful half guard. Yeah, his striking also has improved a lot, but no secret as to what he'll be trying to do in this matchup tonight. Well, we probably trot out the term well-rounded in modern-day mixed martial arts more than we should, but this fighter certainly fits the bill. Oh, 110%. He can do everything inside the octagon. Where he is most comfortable is inside of that eight-sided structure right. where most men are terrified of being. But for this gentleman, he only wants to be there. When you try to wrestle him, he's able to defend takedowns. If you dare stand and strike with him, he can knock you out. He's got all the tools necessary to become a UFC champion. His first martial art, mixed martial arts, <laughs> and that's not always the case. He believes that he should have a lot of advantages in this matchup tonight. All right, now let's get to the tail of the tape for this featherweight tilt. Both fighters are 34 with similar height and reach. And now for the particulars, here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 14 wins, no losses. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds. Fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil, Charles Dobrot Oliveira. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. A mixed martial artist holding a professional record of 22 wins, 12 losses. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 145 pounds. Daniel the Hangman Hooker! And when
and the action begins. Our referee in charge, Dan Mergliata. Dan Mergliata, your referee. You ready? Are right, you ready? Let's All right, here we guys. go with round one. All eyes, of course, are with this man in the corner. He has won his last three fights by way of submission. His confidence is soaring, as is his popularity. And if he can extend the winning streak tonight, and even do so by submission, perhaps his next fight would not even be a title eliminated, but might be for the UFC title. Round one underway. Man, DC, his hands look good. A lot of volume. Oh! All right, here we go. Our first round is underway, and you know at some point he's going to try to get this fight to the canvas. Any number of different submissions in his arsenal. I don't understand how people don't know that this guy wants to submit you, but it's his trickiness. It's his ability to trick. Oh, he's got him hurt here. Big diving punch lands. Well, you know, I don't like the gi very much, but I have an appreciation and a healthy one for these type of transitions. You can tell he's been in a gi at some point in his life with the way that he moves so freely. I'm skipping jujitsu next week, too. <laughs> All right, so you got to be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't want to mess around for too long. Working off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip What's escape. I love watching this guy move on the ground. Another nice transition there. Such a high-level grappler. You don't see that very often. All right, so he postures up here and now figures to rain down some ground strikes. Yeah, the ground and pound will be a plenty from this position. Close guard. Well, you got to be working off of your back. He's certainly doing so here. Nice punch. Oh, reversal here, DC. What a way to switch the position. Fantastic movement by the bottom fighter. Hooker's got the full mount. Well, he's up, but he is hurting for certain. The finish could come at any time. Big punch lands over the top. How's he going to follow this one up? So just over 20 total strikes have landed for Charles Oliveira. Yeah, he's mixing it all up. Point accuracy on that kick. No wind up, no tell, just a brutal kick. Oh, he's got that right hand going tonight. Punch lands, that's as good a punch as he's thrown all night. The punch that lands down the middle, the one that you don't feel, is the one that lands perfect, and that one landed perfectly. Hooker's looking to pass from full guard into half guard here, but he's denied. Well, these are some excellent ground and pound strikes here, DC. There's an efficiency with which he operates in these situations. He knows exactly when to throw, exactly when to hold, and it's allowing him to really control the grappling aspect of the fight. There's a song there, right? No when. Oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. How about this fight, folks? You see, he was nearly caught in a submission there right at the end of the round, saved by the bell. So back to the stool, mentally probably not in a great place here. We'll see if he can recover and get himself back into this fight. Okay, round two, you ready? You ready? All right, let's get to round two. Nice strike. Oh, he got absolutely bludgeoned. That's as good a combination as we have seen out of him here tonight. The last time I saw a combination this good, it was Donald Cerrone beating up on Rick Storr. Oh, that kick is good by Oliveira. Man, is he timing his shots well here tonight, DC. It's hard to recall him being this accurate in the past. I mean, he is so sharp. And not only is he accurate, he's also keeping very busy. All right, he closes the distance, gets the single collar tie. Starting to do some really significant damage. Catches the leg here. Now oh, there it is. The takedown to City. Catches the kick and promptly counters with that takedown. Great timing, great recognition of seeing the kick coming and turning it into your offense. 
Man, I don't know how you guys eat elbows like this. I know you try not to, but there is no pad, no glove, no nothing on those elbows. He is all beat up from these elbows. I know he's fighting valiantly, but he cannot take many of these shots. All right, well, he continues to manhandle him here on the ground. Now maybe trying to get to a choke position here, DC. Push him off. We march on three minutes to go. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Well, not ideal to spend this much time on the bottom, but you keep attempting a choke now. This might just be a matter of time. And that will do it! He's done, he's done! Yeah, that is high-level grappling right there as he gets the win tonight here by way of submission. And he bided his time there. He stayed patient, waited for an opening, and then when it was there, he certainly capitalized to get the tap here tonight. All right, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. Just watch how slowly he approaches the submission, though. He never rushes. He takes his time, but it's his trickiness. It's his ability to trick people into going to the floor with him that puts them in danger and finishing fights. So a seminal moment for this fighter here tonight as he gets the win by submission. Huge victory in his career, and it'll be very interesting to see how they match make him moving forward. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Bergley out has called a stop to this contest at two minutes, 52 seconds of round number two. Declaring the winner by tap out, Charles de France Oliveira! Well, what an incredible result here tonight as you see the winner there celebrating his victory by way of submission. And they've put so much stock into finishing this fight. They felt like to really spin his career forward, they needed to not just win but get the finish, and they certainly got it tonight. They got the finish. He's such a terrific grappler. Every time he is on his back, he looks for submissions over and over again. Eventually, he found one tonight and got the desired result.
right, coming up next, it's a featherweight matchup between Brian T. City Ortega and Charles Oliveira. Prelims no more. Here he is making his way to the Octagon. This is the first time in his UFC career he has worked his way to the main card. He has strung together some wins, looking at the rankings, and this guy appears like he belongs. A lot more eyeballs on him tonight. The audience is bigger. His popularity has grown leaps and bounds. We'll see if he can handle that pressure and perform the way he has that led to this main card slot here tonight. All right, so here he is. They call him T-City, short for Triangle City, the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu black belt, Brian Ortega. Brian Ortega is a great fighter, a guy that has all the ability inside the octagon. He started as a Jiu-Jitsu practitioner, but you have seen the evolution of Brian Ortega as his career has continued to go on, has continued to proceed. Brian Ortega is getting better and better and better. He has now found himself staring across the octagon of some of the best fighters the division has ever seen, and he will continue to do that as long as he keeps developing the skills that are necessary. And sometimes it's hard to become a champion without having tasted defeat. A lot of people believe the Max Holloway fight for Ortega will be something he can build upon moving forward. Our tail of the take now for this featherweight fight. Ortega is 33. Oliveira is 35. He will have a five-inch reach advantage. We send it inside the octagon. Here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a jiu-jitsu fighter holding a professional record of 15 wins, no losses. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds, fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil, Charles de Bronx. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, a mixed martial artist holding a professional record of 15 wins, three losses, and one no contest. He stands five feet eight inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds, fighting out of Los Angeles, California, USA, Brian T. City Ortega. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Dan Mergliata. So Dan Mergliata shares the cage. You ready? All right, you ready? All right, round one underway here. This will be his first fight on the main card, so that bears watching here tonight. There's no denying just how successful he's been on the prelims, but now on the main card for the first time, undeniably the highest profile opponent and the best fighter he will have ever faced. We'll see if he can get off to a good start tonight. Really making good use of his reach advantage there with that punch. Oh, massive kick, everything behind him. And he lands a big left hand there. Big shot land. These guys throwing early. Oh! Oh! Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go chase that finish down now. Trying to guard pass here. Not today. No, it ain't happening. Good job understanding the transitions. Close guard. Guy's attacking the triangle. He finds himself in trouble because he got a little bit lazy in the full guard. Looks like he's trying to manipulate the head. This could be tight. Oh, wow. Oh. Now he falls back into the finishing position. Somehow stays in the fight. Oh, right into side control, DC. This is where you want to be now because you get to make your opponent decide. 
they try to turn back into you, you can attack guillotine. If they turn away to try to get to your knees, you throw your hooks in and you got all your rear choke submission. All right, so you gotta be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't wanna mess around for too long. Oh, nice job using his strength there to posture up. We'll see what he can do now. He's gonna start looking to land big shots from the top. You gotta be very careful not to stay on the ground and extend the grappling transition too much because he's so dangerous. Maybe he'll try to isolate a leg here, DC. Yeah, it looks like he's transitioning into a knee bar. And this might just be a matter of time. Wow. All right, side control now, DC. When you get side control in a fight, what are you looking to do? When I get to the side control in the fight, and I believe this young man should do the same thing, it's secure first. Grab everything in tight. Make sure your elbows are in. Make sure you've got something locked in so your opponent doesn't just squirm away. Punch short punches, but try to make the opponent make a choice. Either he turns back into you, you take your front headlock, or he turns in the opposite direction, you throw your hook in, and you start looking to get a choke off. Oh, get the cut man ready. Good series of elbows there. Oh, yeah, he's got his work cut out for him. He is tearing this guy apart with those elbows. Close guard. All right, so inside the open guard of his opponent. You gotta be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. All right, so there's the end of the round, and the tide has officially turned a huge head strike to stun his opponent. We'll see which corner can adjust here moving forward. I mean, they've got to be celebrating. They've got to be happy. Everything's working. But the... Você foi muito bem. Acabou com a raça dele. As quedas foram lindas e ele tá tumbadaço. Agora você vai se preparar para tirar... All right, here we go now. Our second round. Okay, Brian round Ortega round Ready? versus Charles Oliveira. Oh, nice check on the leg kick offering there. He's throwing every part of himself into these big leg kicks. Another big leg kick lands. Trying to establish that jab once again. Oh, and he lands another leg kick there. I have a novel idea. Maybe the opponent should try to check one of these. He's got to try to check him, but he can't, John, because there's no wind-up. Yeah. There's no... Right up the gut, DC. He's in a world of trouble now. They say the straight ones are the ones that get there first, and it got right to the target. Nice kick. Right All right, so a nice job there defensively to raise the guard and prevent any damage. Those hands never leave where they're supposed to be, and if you do that, wow, he actually got the takedown. Trying to recover full guard there. Tackling triangle. Triangle looks pretty tight, DC. I'm no Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, but maybe not good here. No, it looks like it's getting in deep. Oh! It's in there deep. There you go. Oh, that was a violent tap there, so he submits him with the arm bar. I mean, just steps ahead of the competition where you're playing checkers, He's playing chess in the ground fighting, and it showed tonight in this big submission victory. Charles! All right, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. Just watch how slowly he approaches the submission, though. He never rushes. He takes his time, but it's his trickiness. It's his ability to trick people into going to the floor with him that puts them in danger and finishing fights. So there he is, your winner by submission. That is a finish they will likely be talking about for some time. Big win, major statement made to the rest of this division. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Mergliotta is called to stop to this contest at two minutes, 15 seconds of round number two. Declaring the winner by tap out due to an arm bar, Charles the Bronx all right, so what a performance by this young man here tonight as he gets the win by way of submission. He certainly put a lot of stock into getting the finish tonight, and he did just that. Congratulations. It was very tough fight, but he knew that if he did everything right, he can get to his position, which is the crown, and he would be able to find a finish by submission tonight. He did just that.
All right, coming up next, it's a featherweight matchup between Yair Rodriguez and Charles Oliveira. All right, well, he's one of the more accomplished Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioners in this division, DC, and I know how many chokes you have in your arsenal. Offensive jiu-jitsu, defensive jiu-jitsu doesn't get much better than this guy. It doesn't get as high level in terms of the jiu-jitsu knowledge. He knows in every exchange that he's the guy that's processing things at a different level, from the armbar submissions that he has shown in the octagon to the beautiful guillotine chokes that he does over and over again. And don't think that he won't roll for a knee bar and get a submission. Right. It's just constant danger when you're in the jiu-jitsu with this guy. And even the high-level wrestlers that he's fought have paused to try to take him down because of that patented guillotine. It's so truly a case of pick your poison with this Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner. All right, so here's the young contender, Yair Rodriguez, a big win over the Korean zombie Chan Sung Jung in November of 2018. Really put him back on the fast track. Big spot for Yair here tonight. Yeah, it's a big moment for Yair Rodriguez. He's one of those guys that you look at and you understand that there's a star quality about him. But then after you get past all of that, you realize that there's a fantastic fighter. The flying head kick of Andre Feely. Oh. That beautiful front kick that he landed against BJ Penn to finish him. Put him in a position where he fought Frankie Edgar and in a Korean zombie afterwards. He has truly earned his right to call himself one of the best featherweights in the entire world. But ever since he made his UFC debut, the focus has not just been contention. It has been to win a world title. He'll try to take a step in that direction here tonight. Our tale of the tape for this featherweight fight. Oliveira is three years his senior. Rodriguez is one inch taller. Oliveira will have a three inch reach advantage. To get us started with the official introductions, here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a jiu-jitsu fighter holding a professional record of 16 wins, no losses. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds. Fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil, Charles do Bronx Oliveira. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a freestyle fighter, holding a professional record of 13 wins, 4 losses, and 1 no contest. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds, fighting out of Chicago, Illinois, Yeah, El Pantera Rodriguez! And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Eve Levine. The veteran Eve Levine draws the assignment here. You ready? After a big win by submission his last time out, we'll see what he does for an encore here tonight. Huge victory his last time out against a high-level opponent. Now, an even higher-ranked opponent stares in front of him. The octagon door is closed. We'll see if he can extend the winning streak under the brightest spotlight of his UFC career. A liver kick, if you take a kick, it's going to shut your body off. Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by this gentleman. Mixes it up nicely in terms of staying heavy and also staying active. Big punch lands over the top. Oh, big knee! What a fantastic strike to throw at the exact right moment. He deserves this moment. Go finish this fight. Oh, nice. Oh! That knee... That knee hurt him. Some real power shots here. Oh. He's got him hurt here. So just over 20 total strikes have already landed for Charles Oliveira. Oh, 
Big powerful punch lands. Now he gets back to range. Ooh, head kick lands. He's hurt. DC didn't take him long to find his range here tonight. Oh, huge strike lands there. Somehow, his opponent stayed upright. I mean, he's still on his feet, but he's not up by much. Under two minutes to go in a back and forth first round here. Straight punch lands. Oh, the master of the transition. Nice scramble. Looking to land the right just out of range. Nice one, two there. Slips the punch. Well, a lot of people think he might have the best jab in this division, certainly using it effectively here. I mean, one of the best jabs in the world across all combat sports. The way that it just comes out. It's and potentially a critical takedown here. Both fighters back to their feet now. Oh, blocks the shot. Massive head kick. All right, so there is the horn at times in that previous round. I didn't think we'd get here after that head kick nearly had him out of there. It was a good round leading up to that. But when you take a head kick like that, when your opponent gets your entire body into that kick, usually the night's over. Very tough to still be standing, but he can't take many more like that. One, a tough act to follow. Here we go with ready? our second round. You ready? Yair Rodriguez Fight. and Charles Oliveira. Dude's hurt. Serve him up. Go get him. Now he's on top of him looking for the finish. Don't allow him to hold you down. Keep moving. Keep moving. All the ground and pound strikes continue to rain down. The opponent better move out of harm's way or the referee's going to stop this. Thing. He better start to move. And when his opponent starts to posture, he needs to put his feet on the hip, push him away to try to escape this very, very dangerous position. Back to the feet now. Well, there's a takedown attempt. No surprise that he would go for it there, but unable to get the fight to the ground. Whenever your opponent knows that you're going to try to take him down, you have to disguise it. He did not disguise it. He tried to shoot a blind shot. It got defended, as you would expect it to. Oliveira doing the right things defensively. That knee might have landed there. So he's really starting to put together some significant body shots here. These are going to take their toll as this fight goes on. Well, as my favorite rap group Onyx would say, stick and move, right? Huh. Beautiful slip off the center line there. Yeah, what a great job of moving his head. It doesn't take much to avoid a punch. So 63 total strikes have landed for Charles Oliveira. And as for the accuracy rate, DC, oh, huge right hand! He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. He got him bad! Rodriguez looking to pass from full guard into half guard here, but he's denied. Oh, wow, that happened quickly as the fighter reverses position there on the ground. Unbelievable position change. Wow, what a transition. Pretty good ground and pound by him here. He told us on Thursday he needed to be more effective in these situations. Certainly effective tonight. Many people have gone away from this style of fighting. This man has embraced it, and you are seeing why he's one of the best that we've seen do it in a long time. I mean, how many can he take? Back mount now. Thought about a joke, instead flattens him out. And now he's got a lot of options offensively, Chad. Yeah, he's got all the options available to him. Now he just has to get all that hip pressure into his opponent's back and just start raining down on ground and pound. And if you're the bottom fighter, better start intelligently defending yourself. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. And he landed the right hand there. 
Oliveira's right back to the full mount here. Oh, he postured up there, gained some valuable separation. And now, the ground and pound starts. Man, how fun is this to watch as he continues to dole out damage with the ground and pound? Take it back to the days of guys like Mark Coleman, just beating people up in the ground and pound. This guy is a throwback fighter, and he's very fun to watch. Yeah, the godfather would be proud. Are you ready? Are you ready? Third and final is underway. Well, he's always on the counterattack, but a nice leg kick there by Oliveira. Oh, I love the jab. I know you love the jab. That was a nice one. It's my favorite punch in all the fight. Okay, hey, cover up. Hands up. Oh, nice. Good series of strikes for him there. Staying busy and staying accurate. Oh, he just heard him. He just heard him. All right, well, he's landed some good shots tonight, but there's no three-piece, there's no soda. More often than not, it's one and done. He's not, he had him hurt. Throwing that jab yet again out of range. And he gets the takedown. He gets the takedown and falls right in the side control, exactly where he wants to be. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Three minutes now to go in the fight. So 109 total strikes have already landed for Charles Oliveira. Well, more often than not, DC, when the strike has been thrown, it has found the home. 52% the accuracy rate against Yair Rodriguez. Well, he continues to do a nice job here defensively protecting the head and sort of maybe letting his opponent gas out a little bit with all the volume. His opponent sees the target, but he can't get to the target. So he'll continue. Oh, how about the transition to the ankle pick? Now we will see where he goes from here. Got the ankle pick. Let's see how he advances from this position. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. Oliveira's lower jaw does not look good. I don't think it's broken, but starting to show some obvious signs of swelling. Oh, nice job using his strength there to posture up. We'll see what he can do now. He's going to start looking to... Well, he's got some of the best chokes in the game. He's going for one now. Oh, he's got a choke. Oh, we're getting to finish here. Getting tighter. <laughs> and that will do it. Wow. <laughs> Absolutely incredible submission victory for him here late in the fight. And that can be hard after several rounds of fighting. You're fatigued, a lot of clinch work, which is exhausting. The technique sometimes can suffer. It did not suffer for him here tonight. All right, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. He was able to get the fight to the ground exactly where he wanted it. Eventually, his opponent gave him an opportunity to get a submission. He did that, and he should be very proud of the work he did tonight in the octagon. So a seminal moment for this fighter here tonight as he gets the win by submission. Huge victory in his career, and it'll be very interesting to see how they match make him moving forward. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Eve Leving has called a stop to this contest at 4 minutes, 19 seconds. All right, so what a performance by this young man here tonight as he gets the win by way of submission. He certainly put a lot of stock into getting the finish tonight, and he did just that. Congratulations. It was very tough fight. But he knew that if he did everything right, he can get to his position, which is the ground, and he would be able to find a finish by submission tonight. He did just that.
All right, coming up next, it's a featherweight matchup between Mursad Bektik and Charles Oliveira. Well, this young man is a really accomplished submission specialist, and sometimes fighters get offended when you call them a specialist, but most people know what he's trying to do in there, and to this point, no one's really been able to stop him. John, he will try to pull guard. Who yeah. pulls guard anymore in the UFC at this point? But he understands that for him to be successful, the fight has to be in the grappling, in the jiu-jitsu. If he's able to extend these jiu-jitsu exchanges, he is the guy that is generally going to win. He understands position. He understands going from point A to point B. He always is the one controlling the underhook. Always has the frame. Just a knowledge of jujitsu that not many people can match. And you can be sure as he makes this walk tonight, he's thinking about just how quickly he can get this fight to the ground and utilize those aforementioned high-level submission skills. Well, it's always exciting when you have such a high-level Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner. This man has been a master of the submission in the UFC, and even though a lot of people know what's coming, more often than not, they're unable to stop it. Because the knowledge, the knowledge of the jiu-jitsu game is truly something that it's hard to replicate when a guy is as good as he is. I mean, he will jump for a triangle. He will jump for an arm bar, and as you slam him to the ground, he starts to understand, okay, I'm right where I need you right now. This is when the game starts for him. If he doesn't secure that submission, he gets you where he needs you to be in order to start to really make you drown. It's like going in deep water oh. and getting pulled down over and over again because every time you think, if I do this, it'll make it better, it just makes it worse. And best of luck trying to find a training partner to simulate this guy in the gym. It can't happen, and it won't happen. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 17 wins, no losses. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds. Fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil, Charles Dobrox. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. A freestyle fighter holding a professional record of 15 wins, 5 losses. He stands 5 feet 8 inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds. Fighting out of Montreal, Quebec, Canada, Merced Bechtick. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Dan Mergliata. So Dan Mergliata shares the cage. You ready? Are you ready? Let's go All right, round one is underway, and how good has this guy been of late? Just wrapping up limbs left and right. The majority of his recent wins, of course, have come by way of submission. He's starting to get even UFC President Dana White excited about just how far this guy can take this thing. He's really a throwback in a lot of respects. When you look at some of these submissions and how he has worked his way towards them, now as the challenges get undeniably tougher, we'll see if he can still produce submissions and work his way into that top five. Oh, he postured up there, gained some valuable separation. And now, the grounded pound starts. All right, got to be careful playing around inside his guard. Absolutely. Oh, good entry there to take the fight to the grappling realm. Now we'll see what he can do from here, champ. This is exactly where he wants to be. Look for him to try to use ground and pound to open up submission opportunities. A lot of top pressure being applied here. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. All right, he's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape or maybe look for a Kimura here. Get out of there. The problem with rolling leg lock in MMA, man, is you get beat up, especially if you're a little bit hurt. Oh, we're getting a finish here. This might just be a matter of time. Wow. Come on, keep busy, guys. Oh, this is where you don't want to be, though. Scramble, scramble, Crazy scramble. accuracy and efficiency with these ground and pound strikes here. And if you're the opponent, 
You got to intelligently defend, or the referee's going to stop. You got to defend, but you can see him now starting to gain posture, and the intensity at which he's throwing these ground strikes is starting to improve. It's starting to elevate because he knows that he can get the finish. Oh, and he connects with a punch there, DC. You gotta like what you're seeing, Muscle. I mean, the speed at which he throws is crazy. Oh, nice connection with that punch. It's one thing to have an edge in reach. It's another to take advantage. Nicely done. 25 total strikes have now landed for Mursad Bektik. All right, so a high amplitude double leg takedown there. Now we'll see what he can do with it to try to advance position on the ground. You knew that he was going to attack the double because he's such an explosive guy. He got it on the hips, finished the shot very quickly. Fantastic job. 45 seconds to go here in round one. All right, working out of side control here. His opponent trying to control posture, but you got to be careful here. All right, it's a good ground and pound by him here, certainly staying busy, and not just busy, but effective. You can just throw punches to keep the referee off of you. This guy is throwing punches to be effective. Oh, you don't want to be anywhere near his guillotine choke. Might have the neck here. Oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. So the fighter was really caught in the submission there just as the horn sounded. Safe to say he was saved by the bell there. So back to the stools they go. 60 seconds to recover here. We're going to fight on, ladies and gentlemen. Another round coming up. All right, we now take a look back at some of the highlights from that last round, DC. A lot for the replay guys to choose from. I mean, these guys are going to be very busy trying to find what replay to show you guys. Lands. Okay, you ready? Round two. Ready? Let's go fight, guys. You know what to do in this round. <laughs> nice punch, Lance. Throws the left hand. Caught the kick. All right, so a nice straight punch there after he caught the leg. He decides to punch out as opposed to going for any takedown. All right, single collar tie now. Good series of strikes for him there. Staying busy and staying accurate. I mean, the accuracy is unbelievable. Oliveira gets lit up by that straight punch. So 37 total strikes have now landed for Mursad Bektik. And I'd also add landing with 62% accuracy tonight against Charles Dubronx Oliveira. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. The Kimura is not the arm. It's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. But now DC trying to isolate an arm. Yep, he's using the Kimura. It's in there deep. There you go. Brilliant submission defense there. Beautiful movement, hip work on the ground here, just outstanding with the transition. He is not staying in one place on the ground, and that's very important. Still unable to find that precise range with the high kick. Oh, collar tie. Well, a really good second round for him thus far after a somewhat lackluster first round. He has found the rhythm and found his striking range. Scary proposition for the opponent now here in round two. Well, no problem getting inside to land that straight punch. He's got a huge edge in reach, and he made good use of it there. Oh, big knee there for Oliveira. Oh, that was a really nice takedown. Working off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. All right, closed guard now. You got to be careful, though. He's got a lot of submissions off his back. Goes upstairs for an elbow. Man, how fun is this to watch as he continues to dole out damage with the ground and pound? Take it back to the days of guys like Mark Coleman just beating people up in the ground and pound. This guy is a throwback fighter, and he's very fun to watch. Yeah, the godfather would be proud. Well, anytime you are in a ground fighting situation with this fighter, you're potentially playing with fire. Oh, nice job using his strength there to posture up. We'll see what he can do now. He's going to start looking to land big shots from the top. All right, good movement by him here on the ground. He really is a master of these transitions. He is a master of movement on the ground. You never know where he's going to be. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. Good movement by him here, transitioning very well on the ground tonight. Step for step, he's staying with his opponent in every transition. Oh, doing some serious damage with those elbows. I think the cut man's getting anxious there in the corner. The cut man better get his stuff. Final round, you ready? 
Third round underway. Well, just as he did in the previous round, he continues to connect on a high volume of strikes. And a good sign, too, doesn't seem to be slowing down whatsoever. Nice straight punch. Oliveira's lower jaw now starting to show signs of swelling. Over and over. You come up, you go down. Another takedown lands. Oh, he's got him in a crucifix now, DC. All of that body weight on his opponent. He's got all the weight on the upper body. His feet are free to do whatever. But the arm stuck between the legs. He's now going to start dropping hammer fists. He's going to start dropping elbows. This is one of the nastiest positions in all of fighting. All right, so inside the open guard of his opponent. you got to be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. Bektik's got the full mount. Lance with the ground and pound here. Man, this is some serious ground and pound here, DC. He's not just staying busy for the sake of staying busy. These strikes are doing damage. Oh, yeah. No pity pat to this guy. This guy's trying to land, and he's trying to land effective strikes. Oh, that's got to be discouraging as he gets right back up again. Ooh, head kick lands, and he's hurt. And both guys really throwing with authority. All right, he engages in the single collar tie. Good takedown. Double leg takedown lands. It's the elbow there. Oh, elbows landing in bunches. Now you gotta cover up. Ground and pound strike there now. All right, so you gotta be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't wanna mess around for too long. All right, stacking him up here, keeping the pressure on. I know you guys do a lot of this training with your jiu-jitsu coach there in San Jose. Oh, absolutely, but it's a difference. If your feet are on our hips, it's a problem. So we shove him through the middle. We shove him through the middle. see on that punch right there. His opponent's compromised, DC. It's one thing to land a hard shot. It's another thing completely to land a perfect shot. And that was a perfect shot. All right, so he connects with another. Oh, big knee! What a fantastic strike. He hurt us. So, Fire a little bit stunned, holding on to him now, not doing a ton, just looking to recover. Oh, big knee. Oh, beautiful jab there. It's one thing to have length. Of course, it's another to use it. Job with that jab. Now goes in and secures the takedown. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Oh, oh, oh. All right, let's look back at some of the action, DC. They go the distance tonight, but you got to think he won over the judges with his striking acumen tonight. Yeah, you got to watch one of the best strikers in the entire UFC. He did everything so well, and in my opinion, he should cruise to a very easy decision. All right, the official decision is now in. Here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for decision. All three judges score this contest 9-28. Declaring the winner by unanimous decision, Merced Beckett. All right, so the judges are in agreement tonight. He is your winner by unanimous decision. Certainly pretty easy fight to score, I thought. Yeah, I thought it was an easy fight to score. Whereas his opponent had a few moments, he was the one that truly did lead all the interactions. He's the person that truly did dictate if the fight was standing or on the ground. This is his fight. He won this fight, and he won it in dominant fashion.
All right, coming up next, a UFC featherweight division fight. Well, always exciting when this guy shows up on the fight card, Daniel. He is a true mixed martial artist. Not really any glaring weaknesses, at least, that he's put on film thus far. He's the new breed of fighter. Those kids that start doing everything at six years old. They start wrestling. They start doing jujitsu. They start to box. He's one of those guys that has every one of those skills, and he does them all at an A-plus level. He's got tremendous cardio. He is the type of fighter that in a few years will just litter the UFC roster across the board. And oftentimes his opponents will say he doesn't really do anything special, but he does everything at a plus level, and he believes he'll have a lot of advantages in this matchup tonight. Well, this dude is a submission magician. I am very thankful I am not fighting him here tonight, and it's really a case of pick your poison. He has so many different chokes in his arsenal and has been a master of getting these fights exactly where he wants them. There are black belts and there are guys like this who can do jujitsu at a level that not many people, regardless of the time spent, can truly get to. His understanding of position is truly unbelievable. He always has the frame. The moment you start to press into him, he's always underhooking, always looking for the next escape route, but not to get back to his feet. Right. He wants to go from bottom to top. If he's in the top position, you are constantly, constantly in danger. Don't think he can't submit you from the bottom. Right. But his position of choice will always be in the top position sitting yes. in that beautiful half guard. Yeah, his striking also has improved a lot, but no secret as to... Ready. You ready to fight? All right, ready to go for round one. Now, as many of you know, he lost his last fight by decision. So a lot of people fancied this young man a future title contender. So how does he respond to that type of adversity? If you talk to his cornermen, they believe he will respond with flying colors. They believe he has a lot of advantages here tonight, and he can get back on the horse, back into the win column, and ideally vault his way back into contention if he can finish this opponent here tonight. Oh, and he lands another leg kick there. He's already landed several in this round, and... The damage is really starting to take its toll. Yeah, it's really starting to take its toll. And you watch the opponent walking gingerly on his legs. And one big tell that you're starting to really do well with your leg kicks is when your opponent starts to switch stances. Right. Watch for a stance switch very soon. All right, he engages in the single collar tie. Wow! Oh, he hurt him! Back to the feet! Boom! Big jab. DC didn't take him long to find his range here tonight, huh? His timing is on point. Look at the whip action that comes from him throwing that kick. And both fighters exchange in the pocket. Oh, trying to pass here, but Dikembe Mutombo style, he gets denied. Blocked! Great job blocking that pass by the bottom fighter. Oh, wow, that happened quickly as the fighter reverses position there on the ground. Unbelievable position change. Wow, what a transition. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. He's putting him in exactly the positions he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here. And he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. Close guard. And he landed the right hand there. All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. All right, working inside the now open guard of his opponent. Uh-oh. Throwing up a triangle. The guy on his back is very good at submissions, and if he's not careful here, he's going to get stuck, and he will have to submit. 60 seconds. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. 38 total strikes have already landed for Charles Oliveira. Another punch to the head. Now some uppercuts. He better move, John. He cannot take these uppercuts from this position. Put your hands up higher. Come on. 15 seconds. 
Oh, collar tie. And with authority, goes to the judo throw right into side control. He's in side control. He's got a ton of options. Well, he had a lot more than a puncher's chance coming in. Big knockdown for him in the previous round, DC. Ready to fight? Ready. Second Good. round underway. You know what you're doing this round. <laughs> Trying to establish okay. that jab once Use again. Use your defense now. Ooh. What a head kick. Oh, both. Both landed. Oh, straight right. Oh, blocks the shot. Oh. Oh, combination lands, and it seemed like almost every strike found the target there. So accurate when he decides to attack. It is a sight Catches behold. the leg here and now goes for the takedown. It's there. Oh, nicely done there as he escapes back to his feet. Oh, nice scramble by him there. Takedown defense on point. He is a master in transition. That's a big strike right there. Fantastic takedown lands. Posturing up now. And now the damage is about to start. Working off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. Close guard here. He's very comfortable here working off of his back, DC. And he's back up. Right up the gut. I'm not sure his opponent knows where he is. No, he doesn't know where he is. He's hurt real bad. That punch landed in the perfect spot. Well, he was a little bit lackluster in round one. You can't say the same here in this second round. He has really picked up the pace, an uptick in the aggression and the output, and starting to find his range here in the pocket. All right, he closes the distance, gets the single collar tie. Big, powerful punch lands. Now he gets back to range. I mean, he's cutting them down the side with these beautiful leg kicks. And both guys really throwing with authority. Nice head kick. Relax, relax. Keep your head. Yeah, he's mixing it all up. He's able to slip the left. Oh, stuffs the takedown oh, without it. Beautiful hip toss, DC. We'll see if he can capitalize from here. I mean, that was beautiful. The way that he took the underhook, stepped all the way across, and hit that hip toss. Watch triangle, watch triangle. There he is. He's moving to the finishing position. Now watch it go parallel, right? And this might just be a matter of time. with the arm triangle. Again, pick your poison on the ground with this guy. All that pressure on the side of your neck. I don't know the artery, John. I'm pretty sure you might. You get all that pressure on that artery, and it pushes you to sleep. What is it? I think it's the carotid artery, and a lot of fighters say they've got a pretty good feel for it. He certainly did there. That's why you got to have friends that are like encyclopedias. John Ennix, my encyclopedia. My guy. All right, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. He does a great job of staying patient. He doesn't rush or panic. You are never safe when you're fighting this guy. You're in a lot of trouble. You're in a lot of trouble the entire time when you're this good in the submission. So there he is, your winner by submission. That is a finish they will likely be talking about for some time. Big win, major statement made to the rest of this division. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean has called a stop to this contest at 4 minutes, 46 seconds of round number 2. For the winner, by submission, Charles DeBrock Oliveira! All right, so what a performance by this young man here tonight as he gets the win by way of...
right, coming up next, it is a featherweight matchup between Mursad Bektik and Charles Oliveira. Well, this dude is a submission magician. I am very thankful I am not fighting him here tonight, and it's really a case of pick your... After a big win by submission his last time out, we'll see what he does for an encore here tonight. Huge victory his last time out against a high-level opponent. Now, an even higher-ranked opponent stares in front of him. The octagon door is closed. We'll see if he can extend the winning streak under the brightest spotlight of his UFC career. Try to establish that jab. All right, so there's the early takedown. Pretty evident, DC, that he wants to get this fight to the ground, and he was certainly able to do so there. He felt like he had a massive advantage in the wrestling, and if he attempted takedowns, he would secure him. Let's see what he does from this position. All right, well, he continues to manhandle him here on the ground. Now maybe trying to get to a choke position here, DC. All right, so you got to be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't want to mess around for too long. Well, the ground and pound is there once again. Strong work here by Oliveira. Push him off. All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. Man, this is some serious ground and pound here, DC. He's not just staying busy for the sake of staying busy. These strikes are doing damage. Oh, yeah, no pity pat to this guy. This guy's trying to land, and he's trying to land effective strike. And he landed the right hand there. All right, he's got the feet on the hips now, DC, in a pretty good position. Oliveira's attempting a knee bar here. Oh! Oh, he's got it isolated. Now he falls off to the side. Oh! He's gonna try to adjust. He's going to need to adjust his lock in order to get the correct pressure on that knee. pressure on that knee you have no choice but to tap Busamar Pagliata somewhere smiling smiling <laughs> he loves that he loves blowing out someone's knee Charles Oliveira he's done he's done oh my goodness what a fight yeah it's not every day in modern mixed martial arts where you see a fight finished by leg lock a great display of technique there just the way he trapped the opponent's leg and ultimately forced him to tap out color me impressed all right, so a wild round and a wild sequence there on the ground, DC. Talk us through the highlights. He's such a phenomenal grappler. I don't understand how people don't know that this guy wants to submit you. He is the best grappler, best submission specialist we've seen in a long time. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Abe LeVay.
Today, we're really gonna tighten it up. Here we go. I love those strikes. I love those strikes. Nice combination there. Man, your next opponent is gonna be no match for you. Time to work. Let's go. Next opponent is going to be no match for you. My clock doesn't stop until you submit him. Let's go. Hey! Good flow. Man, your next opponent is gonna be no match for you. Hey, good transition. Good work, maintain control. Let's push the pace up. Nice work, lock him down.
30 seconds. That's it, that's it. Lock it, lock it. That's the name of the game. Position over submission. Let's see what you got today. Speed and power. That's it. Nice work. Lock him down. Man, your next opponent is gonna be no match for you. No, you can't just lay on top. All right? You gotta create action. There it is. That's it. That's it. Lock it. Lock it. Secure position first. You got this. 20 on the clock. on him. Here we go. Nice work, kid. You're on your way to some high level...
All right, coming up next, it is a featherweight matchup between Alexander Volkanovsky and Charles Oliveira. All right, well, he's one of the more accomplished Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioners in this division, DC, and I know how many chokes you have in your arsenal. Offensive jiu-jitsu, defensive jiu-jitsu doesn't get much better than this guy. It doesn't get as high level in terms of the jiu-jitsu knowledge. He knows in every exchange that he's the guy that's processing things at a different level, from the armbar submissions that he has shown in the octagon to the beautiful guillotine chokes that he does over and over again. And don't think that he won't roll for a knee bar and get a submission. Right. It's just constant danger when you're in the jiu-jitsu with this guy. And even the high-level wrestlers that he's fought have paused to try to take him down because of that patented guillotine. It's so unbelievable. truly a case of pick your poison with this Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner. All right, so here he is right now at present, the best we have to offer at 145 pounds, the undisputed featherweight king, Alexander Volkanovsky. And you want to talk about a championship performance as betting underdog. A lot of people look at Rafael Dos Anjos back in the day against Showtime Pettis. How about what Volkanovsky did in outclassing Max Holloway to realize UFC gold? And he's just starting to put it all together. So it's a scary proposition for the rest of this featherweight division to think just how good this Volkanovsky could be now, having made those improvements since winning the belt against Holloway. All right, now let's get you the tail of the tape for this featherweight tilt. Volkanovsky is one year his senior. Oliveira will have a three-inch reach advantage. All right, now for the particulars, he is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a jiu-jitsu fighter holding a professional record of 19 wins, one loss. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds, fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil, Charles Dobrox Oliveira! And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, a mixed martial artist holding a professional record of 25 wins, 2 losses. He stands 5 feet 6 inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds. Alexander the Great Volgonovsky! And when the action begins, a referee in charge, Eve Levine. The veteran Eve Levine draws the assignment here. Are you ready? Are you ready? So on the strength of a big win by submission his last time out, we'll see if this young man can keep it going here tonight. Round one is underway. Dominant performance his last time out to extend the winning streak and to set up this massive, massive opportunity tonight. We'll see if he can take advantage. Big punch lands over the top. How's he going to follow this one? All right, here we go. Early round one. Going to be very interesting to see how long this fight stays upright given the fact that he is so good with his ground game and submissions. He has to try to find a way to get to the mat. Even if he just drives in the takedown just to fall back to his back and start a grappling exchange. This is where he needs to be. He is the best. Oh, and now the hip toss in a great position now to dole out damage. He did a great job of stepping all the way across to get that hip toss. Now look for him to start chasing down a submission. All right, so you got to be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't want to mess around for too long. Just over three minutes to go. Oh, he postured up there, gained some valuable separation. And now the grounded pound starts. Now he's on top of him looking for the finish. All right, bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape, DC. Gets the elbow up into the target. All right, so inside the open guard of his opponent. You got to be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. Oh, really nice work to keep busy off of his back as he lands some more offense here from bottom. 
Well, you know, I don't like the gi very much, but I have an appreciation and a healthy one for these type of transitions. You can tell he's been in a gi at some point in his life with the way that he moves so freely. I'm skipping jujitsu next week, too. <laughs> well, he's staying pretty effective here, fighting off of his back. Nice strike landed there by the bottom by Volko. All right, has the guard closed here? All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Push him away. All right, good movement by him here on the ground. He really is a master of these transitions. He is a master of movement on the ground. You never know where he's going to be. 36 total strikes have already landed for Charles Oliveira. Powerful leg kick land. Oh, look at him land another jab there. He's certainly using that weapon effectively here tonight. The most effective weapon in all of boxing, in all of combat sports, is a jab. This young man has a knowledge of using it like no one else. Oh, he catches the... Well, he caught the kick there and then counters with the takedown. So a lot of fighters, when they catch that kick, will move immediately into the takedown, and it worked out for him there. It worked out great. Caught the leg, drove right into his opponent, and put him on his back. All right, let's look back at some of the action, DC. Your good friend Mark Coleman, the godfather of the ground and pound, would be proud. He'd be very proud. He'd be very proud with the way that he showed his ability to use his ground and pound. He didn't waste any action. He did everything he needed to do. He was able to posture. He was able to control risk. He did everything perfectly in his approach in that ground and pound sequence. Straight right. Oh, just out of range with that right hand. Looked like he might have landed there instead. A swing and a miss by Oliver. Oh, nice left hook there from Volkanovski. Volkanovski is such a phenomenal fighter. I believe his confidence is what truly carries him to be so spectacular, to be so successful. He believes with every part of oh. He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt. Oh. 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 Kick home and now his opponent in a world of trouble. Such a sneaky head kick. He did not recognize it was coming high, and now he's got him hurt bad. So 57 total strikes have landed for Charles Oliveira. And landing... Oh, he's in trouble. He's hurt bad. to the feet and an immediate transition to the judo throw right into side control he's inside control he's got a ton of options under three minutes now remain in round two all right side control now we'll see if he can advance position we have crossed the midpoint of this one Crazy accuracy and efficiency with these ground and pound strikes here. And if you're the opponent, you got to intelligently defend or the referee's going to stop the you got to defend, but you can see him now starting to gain posture and the intensity at which he's throwing these ground strikes is starting to improve. It's starting to elevate because he knows that he can get the finish. Oh, wow, that happened quickly as the fighter reverses position there on the ground. Unbelievable position change. Wow, what a transition. How about the speed on that reversal there? I mean, I know you can get out of some bad spots, but not with that type of speed. You cannot allow him to get leverage on the bottom. What a sweep. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts. You gotta be very careful not to stay on the ground and extend the grappling transition too much because he's so dangerous. Maybe he'll try to isolate a He's gonna need to adjust his lock in order to get the correct pressure on that knee. And this might just be a matter of time. The sheer will is, is really remarkable to watch. Bottom fighter trying to control posture, unable to do so. And now he's in a lot of danger. He's got to grab that head or he's going to get blasted.
tá indo muito bem, entendeu? Você tá dominando bem com a sua envergadura. You ready? You ready? Five minutes to go. É isso aí, agora nice straight punch. Maybe time to get the bonus checks ready. I mean, this fight is about done. He's got him hurt very bad with his head kick. Now he has to find one more strike to end the night. Well, Alexander Volkanovsky has never lost a pro fight at 145 pounds, and if his boxing is any indication, that is a record that is probably going to hold up after tonight. I mean, Volkanovsky follows the game plan to a T. Whatever you set out in front of him, he is going to do, and he's going to do it at the highest level. We saw that in this fight against Max Hollow. Oh! Oh, he's hurt. That'll do it! Oh! Woo! What a fight! Again, the winner here was so aggressive with his onslaught. He wanted to make sure he kept the judges out of the equation. Mission accomplished on that front as he gets the TKO victory here tonight. Well, he's going to enjoy watching this one back. Let's take a look at the replay of the knockout just a moment ago. It was right hand after right hand after right hand. Finally, he found the one that hit the exact sweet spot that ended his opponent's night. All right, Bruce Buffer is in there with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Eve Leving has called a stop to this contest at one minute. Third This round, I just want to see heavy punches. Let it go. Man, your next opponent is going to be no match for you. Devastating punch. Awesome job. Thirty seconds. 
Let's go. Perfect work. Excellent job today. Better than last time, and it'll be better next time. All right, some sweet science. Let's go. Good work with your hands. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. It's starting to fall apart. Ready to go. Nice punch. Nice punch. Felt that one. No worries. We'll get better. Let's show up tomorrow. All right, some sweet science. Let's go. Great combo. Keep it up. Great job in there. Your timing is really on point. damaged him. Yes. Let's go. Come on now. You got 30.
sharp, kid. That's what I like to see. Volume and precision. This round, I just want to see heavy punches. Let it go. Oh, nice punch. Nice punch. He felt that one. Man, your next opponent is going to be no match for you. Make it happen. Thirty to go. Show me. That's how we do it. Let's see what you got today. Speed and power. That's it. Nice work. Lock him down. Come on. Let's work here. 
It's okay. It's okay. You almost had it. You almost had it. Tried submission. One more time. Yes. 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 That's it. Now try to lock it up. Getting better. Coming up next, we get to a featherweight matchup between Max Holloway and Charles Oliveira. Are you ready? So he lost his last fight by vicious KO. All of that said, as round one gets underway here, he hasn't lost his confidence. You sit down with this young man here during fight week, and he's still unshakable. He still believes that his ceiling is UFC championship. Some people have questioned that given the way his last fight went out. But again, when people have doubted this young man, that is when he has turned in the biggest performances of his career. He is looking to do just that here once again tonight. Oh, nice land there with the punch. You see, he's taking advantage of what is an obvious edge in reach. All right, here we go. Our first round is underway, and you know, at some point, he's going to try to get this fight to the canvas. Any number of different submissions in his arsenal. I don't understand how people don't know that this guy wants to submit. But it's his trickiness. It's his ability to trick people into going to the floor with him that puts him in danger. Does he pull guard? Does he pretend that he got knocked down? We saw Verdum do it. Right. The Fedor act like he got knocked down. Fedor jumps from his guard, gets a submission. This man has that same ability. So 35 total strikes have landed for Charles Oliveira. And just misses with that big right hand. Oh, strong punch there by Oliveira. Combination landed by Holloway. Oh, 
Oh, and there he goes working off that jab again. How's your jab? I mean, the jab's nice. I love throwing the jab. But you realize that as MMA evolves, guys will start to fight behind a very educated jab. It's just like boxing. The most thrown punch, and the first one you learn is a jab. Right. And in MMA, guys are starting to take that same approach because it is such an effective weapon. Big, powerful punch lands. Now he gets back to range. Right hand on point. Well, DC, headgear's not allowed, but he has raised the hands, and he's doing a nice job protecting the dome. He's doing a great job of blocking his head. A lot of times, those shots to the head will knock you out. Not this time. This guy's making sure nothing lands. He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. Oh, big knee there for Oliveira. Oh. That's as good a punch as he's thrown all night. The punch that lands down the middle, the one that you don't feel, is the one that lands perfect, and that one landed perfectly. Big knee! All right, so he continues to land that patented jab and keeping his opponent at bay. You can know that it's coming, but until you're in there with him, the speed and the power of that jab is something you can't really prepare for. Oh, nice job here staying busy off of his back. Nice offense from the bottom. Round two is next. All right, so there's the horn. He got knocked down by a punch in that round, but he is able to survive. We'll see if they can make some adjustments. He's as tough as they come. He took that shot and he kept plodding forward. He got off of his butt. He got himself off of the canvas and tried to get right back to work. But he cannot take many more of these. You don't want to be the guy that's testing how tough that your chin is. You ready? You ready? All right, round two. Oh. Now goes in and secures the takedown. A lot of top pressure being applied here. Oliveras has got full mount now. Fighter try to pass here, ooh, but gets denied. Gets denied, great job, great recognition of seeing what your opponent was trying to do. All right, inside his opponent's guard here, DC. You don't wanna play around here too long. No, you gotta either have two hands in or two hands out, or guys start to attack triangle. Oh, he postured up there, gained some valuable separation. And now, the ground and pound starts. All right, working inside the closed guard now. This is no safe place against this opponent. Well, you see all the grappling repetitions here. Just beautiful movement, seamless transitions on the ground. Over and over, these guys are doing things that you see in every jiu-jitsu gym around the country. Oh, and he's able to land a strike there from the bottom. Nicely done by Holloway. All right, he's sort of hanging out here, unguarded, DC. Not sure if he's trying to bait him in or what, but not great body language here. Now look at him jumping in to try to get the finish. Well, these numbers are unofficial, but they are strong. 73 total strikes have already landed for Charles Oliveira. And a pretty efficient effort thus far. 62% accuracy on the strikes against Max Holloway. Well, his corner was pretty urgent after round one. A little bit lackluster there in that opening round. He has certainly picked up the pace here, and as a result... Oh, 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 he might be news hurt. Serve him up. Oh, oh man. man! That is it! Oh, my goodness! What a performance! Again, the winner here was so aggressive with his onslaught that ultimately appeared as though the outcome was an eventuality, so if you're the referee, you gotta protect the fighter, and I thought he did a good job of doing just that. I mean, just landed that beautiful kick right under the Bruce Buffer has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Eve Levine has called a stop to this contest at 2 minutes, 51 seconds of round. Are you ready? Are you ready? Fight. All right, so after a loss by knockout his last time out, we'll see if this young man can regain the momentum that saw him vault into contention not all that long ago. His cornermen really believe that this adversity could be something that buoys him going forward. Certainly nobody wants to be knocked out and in devastating fashion the way he was in his last fight. But now tonight, another opportunity to prove that he is one of the best in the world in this division.
right, so he postures up here and now figures to rain down some ground strikes. Yeah, the ground and pound will be a plenty from this position. Oh, nice work from the bottom. Tags him with the punch. All right, working out of side control here. His opponent trying to control posture, but you got to be careful here. A lot of top pressure being applied here as he works out of side control. It's the elbow there. All right, so back to the well with the elbows, and I guess if it's not broken, no need to fix it as he lands another combination there. He's getting in so close that it's hard to land anything else, so he's shortening up those elbows, and they're landing beautifully. Oh, nice job using his strength there to posture up. We'll see what he can do now. He's going to start looking to land big shots from the top. Well, he's got his back now. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Posturing up now. And now the damage is about to start. Oh, really nice work to keep busy off of his back as he lands some more offense here from bottom. All right, dominant position for him here, full mount. If you're the bottom fighter, better start moving those hips, DC. Oh, you got to start moving those hips. What you should do initially, right, is start to push at the knee. Push at the hip, create some distance, shrimp, and try to recollect half guard. Half guard sucks, but it's much better than being mounted fully by your opponent. Well, 25 total strikes have landed for Charles Oliveira. Oh, nice straight punch there. Must be nice to have a reach advantage like this, DC. Oliveira gets caught with that punch. He'd be wise to get those hands up. Oh! Big shots exchanged in the pocket there. Oh, what a fantastic strike to throw at the exact right moment. He deserves this moment. Go finish this fight. tonight full side control now quick hip movement there and he does indeed get back to his feet nicely done all right so that's the end of the round a lot of highlights from which to choose but his success in that round certainly rooted in his offensive takedown game and that's what he does right he's a grinder he's the type of guy that wants to get a hold of you drag you to the floor it doesn't bother him that much if you get back to your feet. He just wants to continue to make you work the entire time because he understands this type of grind that most guys can't keep up with. All right, DC, here we go. Round two. How good is this? Max Holloway versus Charles Oliveira. I mean, he's cutting him down the side with these beautiful leg kicks. And he landed the right hand there. Mixes it up nicely in terms of staying heavy and also staying active. Good stick. Just misses with the straight right. Big power shot there. Oh, and the gentleman lands another punch there. He is keeping the strike counters busy tonight. The counts are high, but it's also the timing at which he lands these strikes. A lot of top pressure being applied here. Bottom fighter trying to control posture, unable to do so. And now he's in a lot of danger. He's got to grab that head or he's going to get blasted. 48 total strikes have already landed for Charles Oliveira. Striking at a 57% accuracy rate against Max Holloway. Man, it's almost like he's got a range finder out there. Just too easy as he connects with another good series of man. Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go chase him. This fight's gonna be over, DC. What a great way of mixing up his attack. He didn't stay the course. He mixed it up. He went high, low, and now he's got him hurt very badly. Well, he's really picked up the pace here in round two. Much more aggressive now here, and starting to find himself in the pocket. 
Well, as usual, Max Holloway punches and bunches, putting it all here together. I'm just not sure how much more volume his opponent can take. Oh, really using his reach advantage there as he lands the punch, DC. Nice punch land. Oh, landing a punch with the left hand now, so certainly putting it all together on the feet tonight. He's doing a lot of work with his offhand. Oh, he heard a bell with a jab. And that left hook landed on the button. Well, no surprises, he connects once again, and that looked like it landed right on that cut. Right on the cut, and he's targeting it, right? He's looking, you can see him almost putting a laser. Whoa! He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. Every time these guys come together, man, you just hear the, the punches and everything landing. Both, both very powerful, very, very explosive. All right, he's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape or maybe look for a Kimura here. Close guard here. He's very comfortable here working off of his back, DC. Well, anytime you are in a ground fighting situation with this fighter, you're potentially playing with fire. Oh, wow, that happened quickly as the fighter reverses position there on the ground. Unbelievable position change. Wow, what a transition. And that's the end of round number two. All right, so a huge round for him there. Nearly had him out of there with the head kick. Did get the knockdown. Talk us through the replay. He got the knockdown. He won the round. He did everything correct. The only thing he didn't do is finish the fight. But if he continues down the path, if he continues to do the exact same thing as he did before, he will get that finish. Here we go. Five minutes remain in the fight. Well, he hasn't really showed any signs of slowing down tonight. He continues to connect on a high volume of strikes here. A lot of different looks. He switches to southpaw now. Start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. Well, there's a takedown attempt. No surprise that he would go for it there, but unable. That is how you scramble, folks. Now goes in and secures the takedown. Working off his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. Pretty good work with the strikes here off of his back by Max Blessed Holloway. Oh, he's got the knee on the belly. Could be trouble defensively. Now he's on top of him looking for the finish. All right, so inside the open guard of his opponent. You gotta be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. Oliveira's back in half guard, very comfortable here. I love watching this guy move on the ground. Another nice transition there. Such a high level grappler. You don't see that very often. Oh, reversal here, DC. What a way to switch the position. Fantastic movement by the bottom fighter. Well, as we call on the unofficial numbers, 88 total strikes have landed for Max Holloway. And striking at a 63% point oh, tonight man, against... Oh, look at that. Picture perfect. Got to the leg, got to his position, got another beautiful takedown. All right, so you got to be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't want to mess around for too long. All right, bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape, DC. And now he has a headlock trying to pin his opponent's back down flat onto the mat. Look for him to transition to an arm triangle to try to chase the finish. There he is. He's moving to the finishing position. Now watch, he goes parallel right next. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. him to sleep with the arm triangle again pick your poison on the ground with this guy all that pressure on the side of your neck i don't know the artery john i'm pretty sure you might you get all that pressure on that artery and it pushes you to sleep what is it i think it's the carotid artery and a lot of fighters say they've got a pretty good feel for it he certainly did there
That's why you got to have friends that are like encyclopedias. John Ennix, my encyclopedia. My guy. All right, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. He was able to get the fight to the ground exactly where he wanted it. Eventually, his opponent gave him an opportunity to get a submission. He did that, and he should be very proud of the work he did tonight in the octagon. So there he is, your winner by submission. That is a finish they will likely be talking about for some time. Big win, major statement made to the rest of this division. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Eve Levine has called a stop to this contest at four minutes, six seconds of the third round. Declaring the winner by submission due to an arm triangle choke, Charles DeBrunt Oliveira! Well, the celebration is on in his corner and hard to blame these guys, sort of...
focus on submissions today. I want you to work for that superior position and bait your opponent into a trap. Let's go. Nice pass. Man, your next opponent is going to be no match for you. Let's push the pace on. Stay focused, yes, don't lose the submission. Listen, you got to improve position. Don't stop now, 30 on the clock. Hey, you have to stop her from moving. Let's go. Saw some nice submission skills today. Really like what I saw.
My clock doesn't stop until you submit him. Let's go. Hey, good transition. Let's go. Nice transition. Hey, 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 hey. I want to see more work, okay? I want to see more work in that position. Nice work, lock him down. Man, your next opponent is gonna be no match for you. Great control. Come on, last 10 seconds. Let's push. Beautiful combination. Keep it up, put the pressure on him. Nice, nice. Your jits is coming together nicely. Okay, BJJ 101. I want to see maximum efficiency and minimal effort. Be smart with your traps, and don't expend too much energy looking for that submission. Let's go. Hey, good transition. Let's go. Listen, you got to improve position. go there we go position before submission I like it come on keep working here it will happen that's how we work this is when we put it all together great job nice job Okay, start working on that submission. 20 seconds left. Come on. Good progress. Good progress. Keep working on it. That's the name of the game. Take him down and get on top, all right? Nice, nice. Really great job today. Hold him there. Hey. 
There we go. Drive them through the sky. Nice control. Okay, focus. Thirty seconds. Let's go. Get heavy on him. You'll see it when it happens. Boom. Nice work. I like it. You stayed heavy on top and controlled your sparring partner with ease. That's exactly what. <laughs> Man, it's crazy. Seems like just yesterday you stand up at the posters all wide-eyed. <laughs> You've been through a lot. Hell, I put you through a lot. But it was all for one reason, to get you here. Your first UFC champ. I just want to say, uh, no matter what happens out there, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of the fighter you've become. That... Don't get me wrong, though. If you lose, I'm going to have to bust you up in the gym next week. <laughs> I already made space on the wall for a new picture, and you know how much I hate redecorating, right? Let's go get that belt, champ. Well, what a feel-good story for this young featherweight. He has worked so hard to set up this championship opportunity. He puts it all on the line here tonight. The long win streak, all the dues paid, all the hard work. The hay is in the barn. 
Now he is 25 minutes or fewer away from being belted with the UFC featherweight gold. First UFC title fight. We'll see if he can make the most of it. Well, how about the pop as the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC featherweight champion works his way to the octagon here tonight. Yet another title defense is what's in front of him. He is healthy. He is ready to prove that all the featherweights below him are just that, below him for a reason. He believes he is the champion for a reason. He believes he should be mentioned with the all-time greats. And that is what is at stake for him here tonight. Another title defense, another chance to prove that he is one of the greatest 145-pound fighters this octagon has ever hosted. And now our tale of the tape for this featherweight championship fight. Chung is two years his senior. Oliveira will have the two-inch reach advantage. All right, now for the particulars, here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon, Dan Mergliata. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live! from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. It's time! Five rounds for the undisputed UFC featherweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 20 wins, two losses. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds. Fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil, presenting the challenger, Charles Dobrox Oliveira. And now introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a kickboxer holding a professional record of 20 wins, eight losses. He stands five feet, seven inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds, fighting out of Seoul, South Korea, presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC featherweight champion of the world, the Korean zombie, Chan Song Jong. All right, this is for the UFC Championship. I want you to obey my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times, want a nice, clean, safe fight. Touch gloves, go back to your corners, come out fighting. They touch him up, and we are underway. You ready? All right, you ready? All right, here we go with round one, and all eyes are on the submission magician. Shades of Damian Maya, of course, he has won the majority of his recent fights by way of submission and a number of different methods of victory to boot. So now fighting a guy with legitimate Brazilian jiu-jitsu defense, we'll see if he can find a way to secure a submission and propel his career to the next level. All right, he engages in a single collar tie here. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? All right, good to have you with us tonight as we get round one underway. On one side of this equation, we have one of the best jiu-jitsu practitioners in the sport. And whether he pulls guard or goes for the takedown, you got to think at some point, this fight's going to hit him out. As soon as the fight hits the floor, he's going to start throwing those legs. He'll start attacking his neck. You are never safe when you're fighting this guy. So both guys landing at will here. Good action early. Great timing on that beautiful takedown. 
Both fighters get up now. Oh, spinning back fist. He didn't telegraph that one at all. Three minutes to go here, round one. 26 total strikes. Strikes the top, right to the target. Let's see if his opponent can survive. I cannot believe he is still standing after taking that punch. Right hand punch from the clinch. Stuff the takedown, no problem. Tosses him to the mat. Now we'll see what he can do from here, DC. Right into side control. He's going to try to control him, then find a submission. Oh, elbow to the head there by Oliver. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. All right, pretty good series of knees by him there, so mixing up the striking really well in this fight tonight. Fantastic fighter, but when he added knees to his game, he became even better. Rubber guard for him now, DC. Some people believe this is nothing more than a stall tactic. What do you think the offensive fighter is trying to do here? He needs to regain his posture, right? He needs to shove that foot down from around his neck, shove it down, build your base, get that arm free, and then get back to work trying to advance position to your ground and pound right. If you play in there, you can find yourself in a lot of danger if you're not careful. Oh, man. This ground and pound is good. Probably my favorite striking realm in MMA, and he's as good as it gets. The problem is his opponent is not controlling his posture. He's allowing his opponent to get up, and when he does, he creates this space to land these beautiful ground and pound combinations. All right, he's sort of hanging out here unguarded, DC. Not sure if he's trying to bait him in or what, but not great body language here. All right, we'll see how he chooses to defend here. Working off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. Now it's his mount. Oh, he postured up there, gained some valuable separation. And now the ground and pound starts. All right, so a big knockdown for him, courtesy of that punch in that round. DC, here's your replay. Big moment in the previous round. They were both fighting very well, but when he landed this punch right here that sits his opponent down, it shows that the power is not equal, and if he can land, he does have the ability to damage him. All right, second round now. The Korean zombie is here. Chan Sung Jung versus Charles Oliveira. Starting to do some really significant damage to the body here. Another strike lands there. Oh, nice right hand. Olivera's lower jaw now starting to show signs of swelling. All right, so a good job defensively by him here as he raises the guard and prevents any damage. Shades of James Tony, always seeing things coming at him. He's such a great defensive fighter. Right. Let's get going now. Oh, nice punch there by Olivera. 59. Oh. Oh. And that's going to do it. Yeah, man, crowd loving it. Just a gorgeous shot there to end the fight. Really just the way he drew it up. He found the opening and capitalized on it to the utmost extent. Nicely done to finish the fight. All right, DC, no Telestrator tonight, but we're going to get you some highlights from this one. This was a fight that had it all, and for my money, his best performance to date. His best performance to date in the biggest moment. In the biggest moment, you got to show up, and that's exactly what he did tonight. He used every bit of his skill to get the job done. Bruce Buffer is here. He has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Mergliano has called a stop to this contest at one minute, three seconds of round number two. Declaring the winner by knockout and new undisputed UFC featherweight Champion of the world, Charles the Bronx Oliveira. So how about it? We got a new UFC featherweight champion, and you weren't even looking at your phone. You saw the whole thing. I saw the whole thing. I was stuck watching this guy. This guy got all. This guy had my full attention. He's a great fighter, a great performance to become the champion of the world.
Let's get on the mat and roll. Let's keep moving until I say stop. Hey, you're coming along really well. Don't overextend yourself. Yes, 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 getting close to the finish now. Yes. Work, lock him down. 30 to go. Show me. Nice work. Nice work. Now focus. Focus on locking that in. That's what I like to see. You kept. We're gonna sharpen up our jujitsu. Let's take our time and look for the submission. Nice work, lock him down. That's how we work. This is when we put it all together. Great job, great sequence of strikes there. Loving that. Yeah, I like that pass. Oh, nice attempt there. That was a nice attempt. Let's let's slow it down a little. Yes, focus, focus on locking it down. You got thirty. Let's go. Let's go. Keep working. Keep pushing. Nice work today. That's hot. Hit the mats and do some rolling. BJJ drills all day. You ready? Let's see. Hey. 
Here you go. Here you go. Now work on the finish. Good. Good job. It's almost locked. Stay in there. Man, your next opponent is going to be no match for you. Set up your pass. Awesome job. Awesome job. Maintain position and work the sub. Okay, I like it. I like it. Keep chasing that sub. 20 seconds. Give me all you got. Nice pass. Saw some nice submission skills today. Really like what I saw. Clock doesn't stop until you submit him. Let's go. Oh yeah, that's how champions train. Nice work, locking down. Stay still, you gotta submit. Yes, 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 that's it. Now try to lock it up. Nice, stay focused. Yes, don't lose the submission. Come on, 30 seconds left. Excellent job. There we go. That's the position we want. Let's go. That's what I like to see. You kept working for position, and you got it. Nice work. Wrestling basics. Attack the legs, work for that takedown, and get your opponent to the ground. Sound good? Okay then, let's go. Yes, yes, flowing on top. I like that. Man, your next opponent is gonna be no match for you. Let's get after it. Just like that. I Come on, 30 
30 seconds left. Okay, okay, good combination work. Nice! Your wrestling base is getting stronger. Now let's keep drilling, keep working, and... My clock doesn't stop until you submit it. Let's go. Good work. Maintain control. Nice work. Lock him down. All right, yes, beautiful work there. Go for the finish. Okay, I like it. I like it. Keep chasing that sub. Man, your next opponent is gonna be no match for you. Yes, you own that position. Good work. You got 20 seconds. Nice job. Start working on that submission. Nice roll today. And coming up next, it is a featherweight championship fight between Charles Dubronx Oliveira and Mursad Becton. So here he is, the number one featherweight contender for a long time. This man believed he was the number one 145-pound fighter on the world. He's called out the champion for a long time. Now he's got the winning streak, the finishes to position himself for the title shot. We will see what he can do with it.
Well, how about the pop as the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC featherweight champion works his way to the octagon here tonight. Yet another title defense is what's in front of him. He is healthy. He is ready to prove that all the featherweights below him are just that, below him for a reason. He believes he is the champion for a reason. He believes he should be mentioned with the all-time greats. And that is what is at stake for him here tonight. Another title defense, another chance to prove that he is one of the greatest 145-pound fighters this octagon has ever hosted. All right, now we bring you the tail of the tape for this featherweight championship fight. Oliveira is one year his senior. He is two inches taller. He will have a four-inch reach advantage. We set it inside the octagon. Here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon, Dan Bergliata. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the Honda Center in Anaheim, California. It's time! Five rounds for the undisputed UFC featherweight championship of the world. All right, round one is underway of this UFC featherweight championship fight. The number one and number two guys in the world. And for the champion, this will be his first title defense. So if you subscribe to the theory that you're not a champion until you successfully defend the belt at least once, that's what this featherweight champion needs to do here tonight. And he is focused on doing just that. We'll see if he can get off to one of his patented good starts here tonight. Well, you saw us reference it in the tail of the tape, DC. He's got the reach advantage and certainly made good use of it there in landing that jab. Both guys throwing potential fight enders here in the early going. Just misses with the jab there. Oh, that was a big takedown. Is this the one that's going to break him? Posturing up now. And now the damage is about to start. Nice hammer fist. Stand up now, both fighters upright. Big knee lands to the body. All right, so both fighters now sort of struggling for position here in the clinch. When you find yourself in this situation, what do you do to get out of it? Anytime it's very tough, anytime you're chest to chest, you have nowhere to go, I think to myself, underhook. Whoever's winning the underhook is winning the clinch battle. So just over 20 total strikes have landed for Charles Oliveira. So he's really starting to put together some significant body shots here. These are going to take their toll as this fight goes on. You're all right, you're all right. Look at him whip his hip into that kick. Mixes it up nicely in terms of staying heavy and also staying active. Another clinch position. Ooh. Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go change that finish down now. Oh, wow. Head kick. Oh. Oh, a significant strike attempt there, but a huge block. Boom. Big jab. Beautiful body kick. Both fighters here continuing to try to get a more dominant position in the clinch, getting fatigued in the process, I would think. It's very taxing to be chest to chest, a position we call 50-50 because nobody has the advantage. Who's going to be the one to find that one little area that they can expose to give them the slightest advantage. He's gonna try to take him down. There you go. Oh, massive slam. That'll change the complexion of this one. Back to the feet now. Bestick gets caught with that punch. Not the easiest guy in the world to hit, but he got caught there. Right on the button. Lands another punch. See on that punch right there. 
his opponent's compromise, DC. It's one thing to land a hard shot. It's another thing completely to land a perfect shot. And that was a perfect shot. The horn sounds for the end of round one. All right, so there's the horn signifying the end of the round. We had a knockdown there, but not a knockout. No, it wasn't a knockout, but you can't take those shots. That big punch landed, and it sat him down. Okay, okay, listen up. You've been here before, all right? That was nothing. You're gonna go out. Okay, round two, you ready? You ready? Let's go, all right, go. let's get to round two. Yes, they heard him in the last round. Same exact one. Able to check that kick as well. Straight punch as we've seen all night. Huge straight punch lands, and he's got it hurt very bad. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. Well, hard to win fights working off of your back, but that elbow certainly a useful one. All right, so you got to be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't want to mess around for too long. Well, you got to stay busy on the bottom. He's doing it here. Nice punch. Oh, the ground and pound strikes continue to rain down. The opponent better move out of harm's way or the referee's going to stop this. Thing. He better start to move. And when his opponent starts to posture, he needs to put his feet on the hips, push him away to try to escape this very, very dangerous position. Olivera's looking for a Darce joke here. Oh, nice. He should be defending right now. And this might just be a matter of time. Wow. Ooh, right into side control, DC. This is where you want to be now because you get to make your opponent decide. They try to turn back into you, you can attack guillotine. If they turn away to try to get to your knees, you throw your hooks in and you got all your rear choke submission. Close guard. Oh, so an interesting decision there is he decides to stand up and relinquish the dominant position. All right. Six total strikes have now landed for Mursad Bektik. Well, pretty efficient with the striking attempts thus far, landing with 65% accuracy against Charles Dubronx Oliveira. Looking out of the half guard here. Get ready to counter that jab. Close guard. Now, the guy's attacking the triangle. He finds himself in trouble because he got a little bit lazy in the full guard. Looks like he's trying to manipulate the head. This could be tight. There you go. Don't give up. Don't give up. Oh. He slams him down. Sometimes you got to just get physical with these dudes to get out of these positions. Masterfully done with a power bomb. Looked like maybe he'd get submitted by that triangle choke. Instead, he turns the tide. We'll see where it plays out from here. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. How about this fight, folks? You see, he was nearly caught in a submission there right at the end of the round. Saved by the bell. So back to the stool. Mentally probably not in a great place here. We'll see if he can recover and get himself back into this fight. You ready? You ready? Here we go, third round of this championship fight. Really making good use of his reach advantage there with that punch. Oh! He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. He's hurt bad. Now he's on top of him looking for a finish. Oh, he got him. He's got him. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. Watch that jump. He's 
going to start looking to try to attack a rear naked choke, and that's exactly what he's doing. He is doing a really good job of relaxing, not panicking because he's getting choked. Yeah, notice he just took the body triangle, readjust the lock, and now it looks like he's got it. He got it. He got it, John. Oh, he got it done, absolutely. He finishes his opponent by way of submission. So a wild round and a wild sequence there on the ground, DC. Talk us through the highlights. He's such a phenomenal grappler. I don't understand how people don't know that this guy wants to submit you. He is the best grappler, best submission specialist we've seen in a long time. So on the strength of a mod, now we go inside the octagon. Bruce Buffer with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Mergliata has called a stop to this contest at 1 minute 49 seconds of the third round. For the winner, by submission, and still the undisputed UFC featherweight champion of the world, Charles de Bronx. All right, so there he is, came in the champion, and he will exit that way as well. The UFC's king at 145 pounds. This dude might be the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. He may just be the best fighter across all divisions inside the octagon. His skill set is so complete that he makes these great fighters look as if they don't belong in there with him. Tonight was another classic performance by this gentleman.
Gracias. JJ is the gentle art, because you don't need aggression to win against a larger opponent. You need patience and leverage. Let's roll. Ooh, that was pretty good. Your next opponent is not going to be able to keep up with you. Nice job. Start working on that submission. Stay focused. Yes, don't lose the submission. Yeah, I like that pass. 30 to go. Show me. Yes, you own that position. Good work. That's what I like to see. You kept...
Let's get in there and move. Nice work, lock him down. Man, your next opponent is going to be no match for you. you. Got to work there. Perfect work. Hey, good transition. Good, good, yes. Start to lock that submission. Awesome job. Yes, work for that tap. 30 seconds. Let's go. Nice work. Lock him down. Kid, nice roll today. Good hustle and good grinding. Okay, let's roll. I want you to quickly move into the dominant position and establish control. Advance the position and look for mounts. From there, it's all yours. Awesome job, awesome job, yes. Work for that tap. I want to see more work in that position. Understand? Let's go. Yes! Good start. Yes, good start. Keep working through it. Come on now, you got 30. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yes. Focus. Lock it down. Focus on locking it down. Let's push the pace on it. Hey, don't worry about it. That's why it's called training.
right, kid. Time for some grappling. Let's keep it fun. Look for that submission. That's it, that's it, that's it. Now try to lock it up. Attempt. Hey, that was a good attempt. Keep trying, all right? And the tap will come. Yes, yes. Position before submission. All right, 30 seconds left. I like it. I, yes. Keep chasing that sub. Keep chasing that sub. Okay. Yes. Keep going. Getting close to the finish now. All right, coming up next, our matchup for the UFC featherweight title. So here he is, the number one featherweight contender for a long time. This man believed he was the number one 145-pound champion for a long time. Now he's got the winning streak, the finishes to position himself for the title shot. We will see what he can do with it. Well, how about the pop as the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC featherweight champion works his way to the octagon here tonight. Yet another title defense is what's in front of him. He is healthy. He is ready to prove that all the featherweights below him are just that, below him for a reason. He believes he is the champion for a reason. He believes he should be mentioned with the all-time greats, and that is what is at stake for him here. Ready. Ready to fight. All right, so here we go. Round one underway of this UFC featherweight championship fight, and all eyes are on the 145-pound king. 
He has successfully defended this title in the past and believes tonight a golden opportunity for him to defend it again and potentially stamp himself the greatest 145-pound fighter this octagon has ever seen. All right, here we go. Our first round is underway, and you know at some point he's going to try to get this fight to the canvas any number of different submissions in his arsenal. I don't understand how people don't know that this guy wants to submit you, but it's his trickiness. It's his ability to trick people into going to the floor with him that puts them in danger. Does he pull guard? Does he pretend that he got knocked down? We saw Verdum do it. Right. The Fedor, act like he got knocked down. Fedor jumps his guard, gets submission. This man has that same ability. Oh, nice scramble by him there. Takedown defense on point. He is a master in transition. Oh, that's a big hook to the chin. Look at him chopping the wood. Chop the wood with those leg kicks. Oh, he gets the takedown. Could ill afford that. Reclaim your half guard. Crazy accuracy and efficiency with these ground and pound strikes here. And if you're the opponent, you got to intelligently defend or the referee's going to stop the got to defend. But you can see him now starting to gain posture and the intensity at which he's throwing these ground strikes is starting to improve. It's starting to elevate because he knows that he can get the finish. Just over two minutes to go. Good stick. Try to establish that jab. Left punch is clean, followed by a right. And he landed the right hand there. And just misses with that big right hand. Uppercut lands for him. Oh, spinning back fist. Oh! So just over 20 total strikes and counting have landed for Zabit Magomed Sharipov. Can't take many of those, you better check. Right hand punch of the clip. Big knee lands there. Nice job by the fighter here to continue to block the shots coming his way. All right, so we're in the clinch. Not anymore. Beautiful trip to get this fight to the ground, DC. No effort, John. No effort. When you do it right, it takes no effort. And this young man just did it right. Oh, how about the speed on that? Oh, good entry there to take the fight to the grappling realm. Now we'll see what he can do from here, champ. This is exactly where he okay. wants to be. Look for him to try to use ground and pump. All right, round two now, folks. Charles Ready, Oliveira Ready. versus Zabit Magomed Sharipa. Oh, spinning back fist. He didn't telegraph that one at all. Slips. Oliveira gets caught with that punch. He'd be wise to get those hands up. Oh, he got that inside leg kick to the target there, DC. You don't want to eat too many of those. And with authority, goes to the judo throw right into side control. He's inside control. He's got a ton of options. All right, side control now. We'll see if he can advance position. Oh, these elbows. Hard to watch, man. It's hard to watch somebody get sliced up. It's like he has razors on the edge of his elbows. Working off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. Oh. All right, working out of side control here. His opponent trying to control posture, but you got to be careful here. Grab those ribs. All right, working inside the closed guard now. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. Oh, and he escapes up to his feet. Very nice. So 40 total strikes have landed for Charles Oliveira. And landing with 40% accuracy tonight against Zabi Magomed Sharif. Well, as my favorite rap group Onyx would say, stick and move, right? Beautiful slip off the center line there. Yeah, what a great job of moving his head. It doesn't take much to avoid a punch. Well, he's really starting to land a high number of strikes here in the second round. No denying that he has taken the message from his corner. Oh, 
home, and now his opponent in a world of trouble. Such a sneaky head kick. He did not recognize it was coming high, and now he's got him hurt bad. And he is back up to his feet. Look at how he turns his hip into that leg kick. Oh, he found the target there. That'll work. Whoa! Dude's hurt. Serve him up. Oh! Okay, he's out! What a performance! A near-perfect strike to end the fight and end the night for his opponent, who candidly may not have even seen that shot coming. So just the way he drew it up, exactly what he told us during fight week played out here on fight night. He found a little opening in his opponent's defense and barged right through it to get the big knock. Now we go inside the octagon. Bruce Buffer with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean has called stop to this contest at 3 minutes, 15.
All right, coming up next, a UFC featherweight division fight. So after losing the championship fight by vicious knockout, the question beckons, where is this fighter at this stage of his career? Certainly the title fight couldn't have gone any worse, but he has put that behind him. He says he has a short memory, and if he can... Trying to set up a choke here. Oh, he's got the choke. He might get a finish here. And this might just be a matter of time. Yeah, so a quick night at the office for him here tonight. He told us he wanted to be efficient. He didn't want to waste a lot of time. He felt his opponent knew the takedown attempts would be coming, and he got the fight to the ground relatively easily, and his submission skills then took over. Big, big result for him early in round one tonight. All right, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. He does a great job of staying patient. He doesn't rush or panic. You are never safe when you're fighting this guy. You're in a lot of trouble. You're in a lot. All right, the official decision is in. It resides with Bruce Buffer. Coming up next, it's a featherweight matchup between Charles Dubronx Oliveira and Alexander Volkanovsky. Ready? You ready to fight? 
after a big win by submission his last time out. We'll see what he does for an encore here tonight. Huge victory his last time out against a high-level opponent. Now, an even higher-ranked opponent stares in front of him. The octagon door is closed. We'll see if he can extend the winning streak under the brightest spotlight of his UFC career. All right, so a good series of kicks by him there. He has mixed it up beautifully, I think, on the feet tonight. He is kicking everywhere tonight. He's doing a fantastic job. Some fighters shy away from checking a leg kick. Check that one. Both fighters hanging down in the pocket and both landing. Look at how he turns his hip over when he throws that kick. Pretty good right hand. Great punch. Both guys throwing potential fight enders here in the early going. So just over 20 total strikes have landed for Charles Oliveira. Oh, look at him land another jab there. He's certainly using that weapon effectively here tonight. The most effective weapon in all of boxing, in all of combat sports, is a jab. This young man has a knowledge of using it like no one else. Oh, uppercut to the head, DC. Now we'll see if he can follow it up. His opponent was doing a great job of seeing the punches coming straight at him, so he changed the angle and came up through the middle with it. DC didn't take him long to find his range here tonight, huh? His timing is on point. Oh, short elbow is good. Oh, nice. That was a beautiful hook. It landed perfectly, and it hurt his opponent very bad. Volkanovski's attempting to pass here, but he's denied by the defense. Oh, nice job using his strength there to posture up. We'll see what he can do now. He's going to start looking to land big shots from the top. Oh, how about the speed on that reversal there? I mean, I know you can get out of some bad spots, but not with that type of speed. You cannot allow him to get leverage on the bottom. What a sweep. Oh, the ground and pound strikes continue to rain down. The opponent better move out of harm's way or the referee's going to stop this. He hit. better start to move. And when his opponent starts to posture, he needs to put his feet on the hip, push him away to try to escape this very, very dangerous position. All right, so pretty good damage here with the ground and pound. Nothing superficial about these strikes. They are intending to harm. Oh, yeah, he's landing very accurately, and he's landing to get damage off. Hey, stop. All right, so not enough action there on the ground. The referee brings the fight back to the feet, and we are back underway. Oliveira's head kick is blocked. No damage there. Big punch lands over the top. How's he going to follow this one up? Just missing on the high kick there. And a nice jab there, champ. The jab was a lost art in mixed martial arts. Guys have found it, and they are nice fighting score. behind it real well. That's how we do it. All right, folks, here we go. Round two. Charles Dubronx Oliveira versus Alexander Volkanovsky. Oh! oh, straight right. Oh, nice right hand. Continues to mix it up, going to the head, mixing in some body shots. Oh, effective strike there by Oliveira. Well, Alexander Volkanovsky has never lost a pro fight. And as effective a straight punch as we've seen all night. Huge straight punch lands, and he's got him hurt very bad. Oh, he might be out. That one landed clean. All right, so he's landed some good shots tonight, but this is not a combo meal, right? No three-piece, no soda. It's one and done more often than not. John, don't you come to me without a combo. I want the whole <laughs> platter. Give him the whole platter, young man. Put some punches together. Make this guy take the whole thing. Give him more than one strike. You have now found a set of punch. The jab is landing consistently. Find something that's going to go behind it. 89 total strikes have already landed for Charles Oliveira. And landing with 67% accuracy, pretty good against Alexander Volkanovsky. Man, he's just got a great feel for the striking realm early in this one. The timing is on point. He's doing a great job of mixing everything up. Connection there, DC. He massive, is massive hook lands, and his opponent seems to be on his way out of the fight. We have crossed the midpoint of this one. So there it is, taller fighter landing a knee to the body. Oh, beautiful level change. Protect yourself, 
Olivera's right torso starting to bruise pretty good here. Volkanovski gets caught by the elbow there. You know he's tough, but you just don't want to absorb too many more of those. Well, he's up, but he is hurting for certain. The finish could come at any time. Oh! He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. Look at how fast. The only person I can do this to is maybe John. John, there's a, there's a weight difference. I don't know if you know jujitsu much. You miss a lot of your classes. If I'm going to do this to anybody, it's Eddie. A couple of hammer fists now. Oh, wow, that happened quickly as the fighter reverses position there on the ground. Unbelievable position change. Wow, what a transition. Nicely done there as he forces the miss from his opponent. Oh, he postured up there, gained some valuable separation. And now the ground and pound start. All right, looks like he's got a couple hooks in here, DC, and defensively, you better be careful. He's gonna start looking to try to attack a rear naked choke, and that's exactly what he's doing. He is doing a really good job of relaxing, not panicking because he's getting choked. He should be defending right now. Oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. How about this fight, folks? You see, he was nearly caught in a submission there right at the end of the round. Okay. Save. Ready to fight? Ready. And we are back for our third and final round. What a punch. Oh, nice connection by him there with the right hand. The right hand is the dominant hand, and you can see how well he throws it. Oh, what a fantastic strike to throw at the exact right moment. He oh, huge right hand. Now goes in and secures the takedown. Oh, reversal here, DC. What a way to switch the position. Fantastic movement by the bottom line. Well, player. maybe cranking the neck a little bit. The question is, can he get that rear naked choke? He is doing a really good job of relaxing, not panicking because he's getting choked. It's in there deep. There you go. There is the tap. So he submits courtesy of the rear naked choke. That guy's got a squeeze on him. He does a great job securing the position, getting under the neck, and then hiding his hands in order to get the finish. Fantastic performance by this fighter. Charles Oliveira! All right, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. I mean, you know this guy has such a great submission game that you cannot lay in his guard. He's so skilled. He's so tricky, and he's so good at weaving a web that gets you lost in it that he made him pay for it tonight and got the submission victory. All right, we set it inside for the official decision. Here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Gaines called a stop to this contest at 1 minute, 58 seconds of round number three. Declaring the winner by tap out, Charles the Bronx.